Welcome to this Ruby on Rails RDF tutorial. We're going to create a Ruby on Rails application that compares how satisfied users are with various shiny electronic gadgets. We're going to download product reviews from Best Buy, which are available in RDFA format, and use those reviews to generate a website comparing different products. First, we need to create a new Ruby on Rails application. For this tutorial, we're going to use Ruby 1.9.2 and release candidate of Rails 3.1. As always, creating a new Rails project is easy. Okay, we're going to give it a second here to install some gems. Okay, Rails has finished creating our product, our project. So we're going to uh, cd into the newly created directory. All right, now the next thing we need to do is to edit our gem file and add some RDF related libraries. A gem file specifies all the libraries that are used by a Ruby project. Okay, so I've just added three new libraries. The first one is RDF, which is a really terrific library for working with RDF data. The second one is RDF RDFA, which is a plugin that allows us to read RDF data that's embedded in web pages. And the third gem that we've added is RDF AGraph, which is an Allegro graph client that allows us to connect to Allegro graph. All right, so now that we've managed to get these in here, we need to switch back to the terminal and we need to rerun bundle install. This will download any missing libraries and set up a complete locked set of versions for everything that we need for this application. Okay, now, this uh, RDF infrastructure that we're using here, a lot of it was written by Ardo Bendikin, Ben Lavender, and Greg Kellogg. There's dozens of related gems handling all sorts of file formats, all sorts of repositories. It's really great stuff. Okay. All right, now, before we go any further, we need to create an Allegro Graph repository and a user account for our application. Let's begin by creating a repository. Here, we're using a standard Rails naming convention for databases. We name it product comparison underscore, and then the name of the environment. In this case, we're in the development environment, so that's what we name it. There's also a production environment traditionally in your server, and a test environment that you use when running your unit tests. This keeps these three environments separate. All right, so let's create that. And while we're waiting for Allegro Graph to create that, let us add a new user account. Here, let's just let it finish that up. Okay, now we're ready to create the user account. We're gonna name the user test and we're gonna give it password test and confirm the password. Hit okay. Now, certain Allegro Graph features are only available to user accounts with elevated privileges. So I'm going to go in and turn a bunch of those on. I'm going to turn on super user, start sessions, and evaluate arbitrary code. So this means if we want to do crazy things like write Lisp code to define prolog predicates that allow us to traverse social networks or something, that's all available to us. So great stuff. Let's just turn that on now. We probably don't need most of this for our demo. Okay, confirmed, excellent. All right, so now we're ready to just add a new initializer file to our Rails project that sets up various RDF libraries at runtime. This will go into config initializers rdf.rb. The very first thing that we need to do is we need to require RDF RDFA. For some reason, this library doesn't get automatically required by Bundler. Okay. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we need to connect to our Allegro Graph repository. We're going to enter a repository URL here, which will be test, test. Let's go back to our browser and get the IP address.
Okay. And again, you can see product comparison underscore and the name of the environment that we're working in. Okay. So now that that's done, we've got the URL to the repository. Now let's actually connect to the repository itself. All right. So now we've created a connection to the repository. Okay. This long URL up here, let's just review this one more time. Username, password, IP address, port number, repositories, product comparison, and the name. Okay. All right. So the one last thing that we want to do is we want to define an RDF vocabulary. There's a bunch of these that are already provided with the RDF library in Ruby. But pr uh, product ratings and the star ratings and the reviews, they use an RDF repository from datavocabulary.org. So here we go. We're going to define DV to be RDF vocabulary new, and we're going to put in the base URL. Now, what this essentially means is at various properties, the number of stars, the name of the product, and all that, will be designated by URLs that begin with this prefix and are followed up by, say, rating or max rating or product name or something like that trailing after the hash sign. So the RDF library just gives us a really nice syntax in Ruby for doing this without having to type that URL each time. Okay, so now we're going to uh, go back to the shell and we're going to open up a Rails console. This is fun. Okay, this also takes a second to load. Okay, now we're up and running. The very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an RDF graph by loading it from a query that we run against Best Buy. And for this query, I want to search for iPads, the Zoom, but I want to make sure that we don't include any Windows tablets. All right, so let's touch this graph. This takes a second. All right, so now we have an in-memory RDF graph. This has much the same interface as a database, but it's just an in-memory working representation. So let's, for example, see how many different statements there are. Oops, excuse me, graph statements count, not group. Okay, so we've got 1,214 statements. About 302 different entities. Okay, so now that we've got this data, we need to do something useful with it. We're just gonna take this data and we're going to toss it straight into our Allegro Graph database. All right, there we go. The data is now stored in Allegro Graph. So the next step is we want to build a Rails controller class to query our data. So a controller in Rails is in charge of processing requests as they come in from the web server, turning them into queries that we run against the database or our model objects, and setting up various vari variables that will be used in order to pass data to our HTML views. One second. So let's switch to Emacs here. We're going to create app controllers reviews controller.rb. And we're going to put, excuse me, one sec. Let me grab a bunch of code to put in here. All right. So here's our reviews controller. It has one method index, which when we run it, 
calls repository.build query. And then this syntax here, do q, essentially means that we're passing a lambda or an anonymous function to build query. And that function has one argument q, which is the query object that we're assembling. Then on this query object, we use the, uh, the left shift operator to append to the query various constraints. The first one we say is that we have some RDF object here, which we're going to name colon review. And this has the RDF type review aggregate. If you see the DV here, this is the same one that we were using before in the up here when we defined the vocabulary. So RDF vo uh, vocabulary new HTTP RDF data vocabulary slash pound. All right. So if we switch back, when we write DV review aggregate, that gets appended on after the pound sign. Okay. And similarly, we're going to take colon review, a statement about the same RDF entity, and we're going to look at the property dv.itemreviewed. Again, this builds a URL. And we're going to store that in the variable name. And the review has a rating, and the rating includes a number of stars. So when we run this, this is going to bind three variables for each match, review, rating, excuse me, review, name, rating, stars, four variables. All right. So we build our query, we run it. We're going to sort it by the value review.stars. And once we do that, we're going to take the sorted list and we're going to reverse it. Some of this would ideally be handled by SparkQL, but not all the pieces are actually quite here in the Ruby tools yet. We're getting there. All right. So now that we've done this, we also need to actually set this up so that we can access it from a URL. So to do that, we go to product comparison config routes. And we add a route, excuse me, route colon to reviews index. All right. And once we do that, we're also going to need to delete a placeholder page that Rails provides for the index so that it'll look up our route. All right. Now, before we can actually see anything, we need to go back to Emacs and we need to add one more piece. And that is, we need to add a view for our index method. So app views reviews controller, excuse me, app views reviews index dot html dot erb. Let's make the directory to contain this file. All right. So in this file, we're going to put in a table and we're going to iterate over each of the reviews here that we stored in this instance variable at reviews. We're going to iterate over those. And now for each of those, we will in turn stick in a table row containing review.stars and review.name. All right, and we're going to end our table there. OK, so now with any luck, we should now be able to actually run a query against the database and see the result of some very primitive HTML. So to do that, we need to launch a Rails-based web server. All right, so that was running on HTTP 0.0.0.0, 3000. One second while I fix this, I made a typo. All right, I hadn't saved my new reviews controller file, so it couldn't find it. Let's go to second to load everything here. All right, so here we go. This is pretty ugly, but we have five stars for the iPad 2. 
We have 4.7 stars for the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3G. This is actual data for Best Buy. This is pretty slick. Didn't take very much to set it up. All right. So, however, we'd like this to look a little bit prettier. It's kind of ugly right now. So the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need some star icons. Shut down our web server. Let's... Okay, here we go. Here are icons. We're going to copy these into app assets images. This is Rails 3.1. Previously, this would have been public images, but Rails has a new asset compilation system and they've moved everything under the app directory. So let's copy those over. Oh, one second, wrong place. Let me go grab a copy of those. Okay, let's try that again. Lots and lots of star icons. Excellent. Okay. So we're going to need to add a little bit of extra HTML for the image tags. The elegant way to do this in Rails is to stick it in a helper rather than sticking it into the raw HTML of our view. So app helpers application helper. And let's just grab a little code snippet I have already lying around here. All right. So we're going to define a function stars, which takes an RDF literal data as an argument. And it builds an image tag with stars, converts the literal to a string, to a float, multiplies it by 1.0. This is a little bit of data cleanup. One of the challenges with using RDF data is it's very similar to parsing and screen scraping web pages out on the web. In that, even though you don't have to do quite as much low level parsing in order to get it, you still need to do a little bit of normalization and clean up a few strange things like star ratings being specified as strings rather than floats and different ways of specifying precision. But once we get all that sorted out, we can create a file name and we can say it's 100 pixels wide and 20 pixels high. And now that we've done that, we can go back to our view and we can wrap that in stars. And similarly, our view name has all of these ugly HTML entities. And to clean those up, what we can do is we can convert our RDF literal to a string and we can pass it to the Rails sanitize function, which says, treat this as HTML, but whatever you do, don't trust it. If there's any JavaScript in there, st strip it out. All right. So now that we've done that, we should have a much prettier page. Let's try it. Oops, we just shut down our server. Let's restart that. All right, this takes just a second to launch. Okay. And there we go. Star ratings from zero to five point stars, including fractional stars. And we're processing the HTML entities. And we can see that some of these uh, cases for the iPad are very popular and that the Samsung Galaxy Tab is more popular than the Motorola Zoom and among the Motorola Zoom here that the Wi-Fi version is marginally more popular than the 3G version and for some reason nobody likes the iPad 2 with Wi-Fi 3G and 16 gigabytes on Verizon. All the other iPads are popular something wrong with that one. All right. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial today. And I hope that you have fun with Ruby, RDF, and Allegro Graph.